first up, a reminder, your orders fuel us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We are working so hard and safely to yeah. get products to people, to make new stuff, to get it in stock, um, to make sure that people have electronics to learn with at home. That's right. Uh, and to play with when they need a little bit of a distraction. And uh, don't forget... Uh, a box. And I think it's important to support companies that are transparent about their safety and health protocols for their employees. So we are one of those companies. Um, our team is safe, and we thank you. That's why we're able to do it. You can go to adafruit.com slash open safely. By the way, we're shipping Adabox. Here's a little uh, promo thing that makes you go to adabox.com and click join, and then you put in your details, then you get it. But this is the thing that... In like a week. This is the thing if that... If you order now, you'll yeah. get it like in a week. This is the thing that we show you. And it goes into your brain, and your brain's like, I want that. Next up, our CircuitPython posters are now in stock. You can get those. Just in time for beta one and release candidate. Pick yeah. one up. And then um, next up, we have a coming soon that's in the store since it was announced, which is the latest version of the microbit. I keep I forgot. Let me yeah, this off. we have one, and we're going to be shipping them as soon as they arrive. So if you sign up, you get yours first. Yes. Um, we get we, notified. We do them. have some on pre-order. We I will say one thing: we pre-ordered them from the microbit foundation, but we do not do pre-orders. And the reason we don't is we want to make sure that if we promise something is in stock, we really have it in stock. Um, but if you sign up, you'll be notified as soon as they come in, and uh, you can get first dibs if you're fast on that buy button. Um, this is the new Microbit V2. Uh, some cool updates. So uh, one thing you'll notice is it's got these little teeth. So these are for alligator clips. So historically, uh, this was nice and uh, flat, but it meant that alligator clips didn't like, they could slip a little bit, and sometimes people would accidentally touch um, the side pads. So um, they now have a little notch, so when you use an alligator clip, it, it grips very nicely. There's still two buttons on the front, and there are uh, 25 LEDs on the front as well in a 5x5 five five grid. Um, this is now a capacitive touch button. This logo, so if you touch it, uh, stuff happens. Um, on the back, there is still the micro USB connector. This reset button um, is also used for power. I think if you like double click it or something, it puts it, the board into low power mode, so you don't have to unplug um, from the JST connector, which is the same JST. Again, you can use uh, two, or th uh, two alkaline or three rechargeable batteries. Um, the chip has been upgraded. It's now an NRF 52 instead of a 51 series. So it's got that Cortex M4, tons more RAM, tons more flash. That means especially for folks who were trying MicroPython on the earlier microbit, um, you'll know that the, there's, it was limited. You could write some code, but after about 50 lines, you'd run out of memory. Um, no, no longer risk. You're, gonna, you're not going to be able to run out of memory on this chip. There's, it's like tons of RAM, and um, there's some more capabilities that was added, such as a microphone, so you can now do voice reactive, sound reactive projects, including machine learning projects. There's also a speaker. The speaker might look familiar. Uh, it's the same speaker that's on Circuit Playground, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Um, so toots and tones, you can make them. You can maybe even play uh, little sound clips um, on this little speaker. Uh, there's still a bunch of GPIO available here. There's an accelerometer, magnetometer. I think that's the LSM303 over here. Um, little assistant chip. Um, even though this chip has native USB, uh, the native USB is not exposed. Instead, it uses um, this DAP-Link chip. So the USB connection is always there and it has serial and um, mass storage and you drag hex files on and it reprograms the chip. So that's still how you're going to program it. So it's like back compatible with the old style. If you want, I can turn it on just to show the little demo. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, why not? We're doing a live show. We're doing a live show. So this is what the demo looks like. Hold on, I got this funky cable. And same USB as before, right? Yes. So it fits in cases. Yeah. It's a little annoying. <laughs> Parents are going to love that. I know. <laughs> So as you could hear, it's got uh, it's still got the LEDs, but now it's got a buzzer. It can make uh, yeah. tones, and you know what's cool is MakeCode um, has support for this chip. And you, uh, if you remember, um, the um, MakeCode has a really cool uh, musical instrument device. They they designed it. It works for Circuit Playground Blue Fruit um, as well, but it'll definitely be more useful now for 
the micro bit V2. So this is coming soon, I think in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, so sign up, it should work with pretty much all of the existing um, peripherals that are out there. Um, we haven't tested them, we just, we just got this. But, um, you know, it has the same pinout and connectivity. So I think you'll be able to upgrade. I think this is now five years in the Yeah, decade. and if you want something with more oomph, get a Clue. Literally, we have Adafruit's Clue, and then we have... It's a great upgrade. Start with this. Yeah. And then you can even show, if you want to show the, the wi upcoming Wi-Fi Clue. Yeah, we'll show that in Top Secret. Yeah, so we have a we have a Wi-Fi Clue being designed. So uh, coming soon, Microbit V2. Okay. This is the only one I have. Here's a battery holder. Uh, here's a battery holder. It's uh, a three AA battery holder. Uh, I, can, uh, I can quickly grab it here. Uh, we already have one in the store that has a belt clip, but we actually got some without the belt clip. And I was like, you yeah, know, this is pretty handy. Yeah. Um, so we put it in the shop. It's got an on-off switch, and it's got uh, you know a simple slot for three AA's. Turn it on or off with this big switch. You know, it's just really handy. This, you know, you can use this with. Um, you can use this with the micro bit, but use uh, rechargeable batteries. So that'll give you about 3.6 volts. Uh, it's not for use with the micro bit with alkalines. But for any of our boards that normally would take a LiPo battery, so they can take like 3 to 6 volts in, um, these battery packs are a great way to use nickel metal, hard, uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries um, instead of a LiPo battery. So, um, you know, on our clue board, circuit playgrounds, um, your feather, uh, sorry, not feather boards, but... Um, uh, like the new Metro I'm designing that has like a, you know, a, a, sorry, the Stemma friend that has a battery input but not a battery charging port. Um, these are very handy. Of course, you can also cut the uh, connector off if you would like and just solder to your, your project. Okay. Um, next up, I'm so sorry, everybody. You know, we're just not good at dealing with pandemics in yeah. the United States. So we have a pandemic pack because you'll probably need to either get one or give one. Um, and we've been doing PPE from the start. So it has some. Comes with a few things. A okay, pulse you get oximeter. a really good pulse oximeter. I really like these, and uh, they, they have FDA certification. We checked that out. Um, it's an OLED display, and it shows pulse. It's got, uh, we also have a version that's Bluetooth if you're interested. This one does not do Bluetooth. We also uh, ship you five um, reusable masks. These are like KN95 style masks. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, and, I'll just go through all yeah. This. and then we also have K95, and then we have some blue surgical blue surgicals uh, and ear protectors. Yeah. Uh, we have this glass. People really like these. This glasses frame. Yeah. Because very light and comfortable. You just you can put it on easily and you can uh, wash it. We have one washable fabric mask with multiple layers. Yeah. Uh, the blue surgical masks and a non-contact uh, thermometer. Yeah. So if you're gonna you know have to do anything over the holidays. Um, Give the gift of not getting infected this holiday season. Yeah, if you, if, right. you, if you give this to somebody, they have no excuse. They can't say, well, I have no masks. It's like, we literally give you, like, yeah. 60 masks. <laughs> okay, next up, we have um, a smaller piece of this LED acrylic. Uh, people really like this, but they're like, we don't need a gigantic piece. We now have a piece that's about half the size. Uh, it fits great on our um, P4 4mm pitch LED matrices. Uh, but of course, you can laser cut it or score and cut it to um, to use with um, smaller displays or uh, NeoPixels. Let's go to the overhead, and I'll just quickly show it. So um, normally, when you get LED matrices or you use LEDs, they, they have this very sharp, bright look to them, which can like well, obviously, it's blowing out this um, uh, this camera, but it also it's a little bit harsh on the eyes. Um, when you put the matrix on top, it just kind of diffuses it. And you still get the colorfulness, uh, and the contrast is a lot better. You don't, you don't see like the off LEDs because they're, um, you know, the contrast has improved a lot. And uh, people really like the look of them. It makes animations, especially, look really nice and crisp. You don't get like, it, it's pixelated, but it looks like pixel art, not like um, points of light that are stabbing you in the eye. All right. Next up. Okay, we've got the new. Feather S2, so this is cool. This is, um, we're starting to see some ESP32 S2 stuff come out. So this is from Unexpected Maker, and it looks like it's a four layer board with an ESP32 uh, S2 chip on it, some flash and some PS RAM. I think it's got like 16 megabytes of flash and like eight megabytes of PS RAM or something like that. It's got battery charging, it's got a boot and reset button, so it's good if you need to go in the bootloader. 
It's got like a funky antenna. It's got a dot star LED. I think it has a light sensor. It has two regulators, um, so you can like go into ultra low power mode. And what's cool is at the end, it's got a STEMI QT connector, which is our favorite because it means you can plug in any of our I squared C sensors. So we can even show that off. So this is the board, and uh, this is the display I'm going to be showing off shortly. Um, and you can see it, you know, it, it just displays the console on the. Uh, so I can get a little bit clearer. And I can try risking no, no, no. There. there you go. I'll try resetting. I don't know if this is gonna work. Give me a second. But um oh there you go. So you can um you can plug in any of these yeah, this LED is so bright. You can plug in any kind of sensor or we have um uh you know obviously these displays, we have um some analog digital converters if you need more pins. Uh, we have uh, like digital potentiometers, all sorts of like weird stuff, all available over I squared C. So you just plug and play it, so you can make your own like Wi-Fi sensor or like air quality monitor without having to do any soldering at all. Uh, it comes with Circuit Python. There's some preliminary Arduino support. Espressif uh, has it in a branch. Uh, it is a little bit early, but you know you can definitely play around with it. We have Wi-Fi working on it, and uh, more coming along. So you can pick up one of these. We have a limited number. Um, but you're going to see a lot more Circuit Python uh, powered ESP32 S2 goodies yeah. coming out soon. The other good thing that I like is um, we are helping ecosystems. So other companies, people, unexpected makers making unexpected things. Um, this is a feather. It's totally unexpected. This is a feather. And, you know, the neat thing is you can elevate, amplify, and we can use our platform to get more hardware out there. So thank you, Unexpected Maker, and everyone out there who make feather and feather accessories. We know for a fact that when people choose electronics now, they want something that'll work with a lot of different things. They also like something they can build upon. So that's why we made feather, and that's why um, there's more feathers out there than I think any other type of platform. So this is always good to see. Happy to see it in the store. So buy it if, buy it, if you have any left to talk. Yeah. Okay, next up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, is this really beautiful large OLED display? Um, this was something that Scott sent over and said, "I want, I want this in the store." And I said, "Okay, I'll, I'll get to it." And a couple months later, uh, I got to it. So this is a 1.5 inch diagonal 128 by 128 OLED that has 16 grayscale support. So you can see these little um, Ada flakes. Um, each one of them is a different color uh, because it has a four uh, bit per pixel display. You can see it kind of from uh, the darkest little, well, there's one black one, so you don't see that, from so the darkest, all the way to uh, all white. Um, you have 16 different grayscale shades. Um, it comes on a breakout board with four mounting holes. Uh, we have both Arduino and uh, CircuitPython support for it, display artists. You saw that CircuitPython actually, um, that was what was connected to the Feather, I just showed a moment ago. Uh, you can use I2C or SPI by default. It ships in I2C mode. Um, I will say because of the size of the display, you need 8K of RAM to buffer it because it's four bits per pixel. It's 120 by 128. It's not going to run on Uno. It's not going to run on Leonardo. You really need something with a ton of RAM. Um, so like, you know, the ESP32, obviously, this is a, uh, a great option because this has a ton of RAM. Um, and this, of course, even better, it has a, a built-in uh, connector um, to communicate with the sensor. Um, another good option which is what I originally made my demo on, is the Cutie Pie. So you see also I can just plug it in, and the Cutie Pie has um, 32K of RAM. So it's also got enough memory. And of course, did I just use, oh, one second. One moment, I think I've got the wrong cable. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know, too many cables. Cables. Unless I broke it somehow. Oh no. No, there you go. Um, so uh, this demo is running in Arduino, and so you can see it's just drawing different shapes in uh, the grayscale uh, colors. Um, I do recommend that if you want, you know, this isn't very, very fast. I'm running it at one megahertz, but if you really want a okay. high speed, uh, I'd recommend going with SPI. You're going to get um, really, really fast performance with SPI. You'll need it because, again, the display is 8K. Um, our Arduino library does have um, uh, like dirty window drawings, so it only draws the sections that have changed, and that helped 
a little bit with speed ups, but um, I will say, you know, if you're like using I2C and you're like, why is it so slow? Uh, go to SPI. You're going to be a lot happier when you can drive it at 8 or 16 megahertz than um, I2C at 1 megahertz. But either way, uh, it's a beautiful display. It's our largest OLED, 120 by 120. It's quite large, um, but it still has all the, the fun and joy of a plug and play uh, STEMI QT connector. So uh, check it out. Check out these OLEDs. I think we put a couple in the store and we're going to be putting in more throughout the week. That's right. Thank you.